What's up, everybody? This is Vaughn again. Uh, so this lesson here today is about voicings. The left hand is going to be very pivotal to making good voicings. A lot of people do a one, five, one type of thing. And this is a hindrance to pretty chords. And I'll tell you why. Because each one of these keys have their own frequency. These are all frequencies. When you start to get a, a lot of low frequencies in the same place, it starts to become muddy and clouded and your voicings won't sound as pretty as they can. So I'm gonna play a C, a C major with an added ninth or added uh, two, and I'm gonna play it with this one five one shape and then without it, and then you'll hear the difference. And different octaves too, so here it is with it. And here's it, here it is without it. Here's it up here. Here it is without it. You hear the space. There's a different amount of space in your chords, in the chords. So when you play this right here and it gets really aggressive, it gets in the way of stuff as opposed to not playing it at all. Or, or actually putting, uh, if you're gonna put your right hand up here, actually instead of playing this, if your right hand is up here, you can actually stretch. And if you can't yet stretch, you can even roll off. So you don't have to stretch. But a choice like that can make a difference in your sound. Check it. Big difference. Hear the difference in that? Something very tiny. Remember, these are all frequencies. And what you want to do, when you're at the piano, you're playing, you're playing the piano, but you're also playing engineer because you don't want to get in the way of the bass player and you don't want to get in the way of the guitar player and you, you know, you're trying to be out of everybody's way. So your voicings count. They all, they all count, you know, uh, in, 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 all, in all the keys, you know. Um, I'll go to a D minor, which is still in C, a, a two, or, or I'll play it like that. That gives you a very immature sound because it's, everything is so thick and it's in the wrong spot. But if you decided, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my right hand up here. You spread this out, the lower register out, the upper register can be close together and it sounds pretty. You spread this out, you get a more open, bigger sound. And so spreading this out, um, I've come up with a few exercises to actually uh, get you in the habit of playing uh, playing with more open voicings. Um, so I'll, I'll do them now. We're just basically gonna, gonna go all the way up the scale. What that'll do is that'll open you up to seeing how wide your left hand should be, specifically your left hand, you know. So I'm going to play some stuff on the right hand with uh, this exercise.
So that creates a pretty and very open sound and that's what you want. Next, I'd like to go into how to voice when you have a bass player. Cause there's one thing when you're by yourself, but then when you have a bass player, you know, you have to stay even more out the way and you're usually in this register of the piano. Now I'm gonna go up the scale again. And just play the uh, voicings. So I'll play the bass and then the voicings. Here it goes. So the best exercise for this uh, is to imagine the bass in your mind at all times. And when you imagine the bass uh, in your mind, immediately when you get on the piano, you'll be playing rootless, but still thinking, still thinking about that so that you're not forced to bring your hands here in this one, five, one shape or, you know, or anything you can stay out the way and you can sound pretty. And that also frees up your right hand more. Like this by itself is a full chord in the left hand. And now this is all my left hand. You know what I'm saying? So when you have the meat and potatoes already in your left hand, uh, that frees you up to be uh, more melodic or, you know, prettier or whatever you want to call it. You have so much more, more leeway. You don't have to worry about all the rhythms that you're playing because your left hand is holding down the fort. And so uh, it's very important to get those left hand voicings uh, together. I know it's a, it's a pain, but it's very well worth it. Trust me. Uh, this is what the professionals do. They, they can imagine the, the bass in their head. And, uh, a lot of times when they, when they are playing by themselves and they're playing their lower register, they're spreading these chords out. And that's what, um, and it applies not only to major and minor chords, like I just showed you, it, this can apply to, uh, diminished chords too. Uh, let me give you an example, just just uh, just to be clear. So um, let's say we're in C still. Let's say I wanted to play an F sharp diminished. Let's say we're C churchy. Mm. Okay, F sharp diminished. All right. A lot of people when they get stuck in this shape, they start to play every bass note with a fifth. And it doesn't work that way because if you notice, I'm going to play churchy. I'm playing the dominant, which is that's what it's supposed to be. But this note is getting in the way because I'm so used to a shape. But just because the shape is here, that doesn't make the note correct. You know what I'm saying? So getting getting rid of some of the the excess you know that would give you an immature sound but if you remove that just remove that note or just play instead of playing this just play that try playing that with it you take out this fifth that you're playing and already you've already got a better sound, you know, just by removing some notes. Uh, you could even not play an extra note at all. And it would still, still sound better than this note being a conflict of interest. And so 
If I'm going up, now I'm going to a diminish. There goes that problem again. See? And, and if that's an issue, then we got to remove it. So we remove it and already a cleaner diminished sound. Now, if you want to get even further and get it advanced with it, I'm still playing this octave here from the shape. But this frequency, this F sharp is in here three times in this chord. Is it necessary? Not at all. So uh, I don't want to take it out of here because it's fine. But here it's by itself uh, and it's kind of in the way. It makes no sense to be up here. We need it at the bottom. So we remove this. There's in a diminished uh, chord, there's three other notes to choose from. Any other one of them will be fine depending on the register you're in. I'll try with an A instead of already a better sound. You know, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite is this E flat here. But getting this out of the way, that little tiny thing made a big difference, you know. So um, getting your left hand under control and getting uh, voicings like that uh, will definitely elevate your playing. It'll skyrocket your playing quicker than you can imagine. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, thank you guys. Take care. Perfect, man. That was better, man. That was perfect, man. Oh, man, thanks. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah, man. You got that touch, man. Oh, man, I appreciate it, man. I hope it helps somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I want, man.